Okay, let's go ahead and begin with Module 1. And Module 1 really looks at the problem. Why is it that we need a CISO? What are the problems that we're trying to solve? And this is just going to be an overview, and we'll delve into this more, of course, throughout the course. So we have to look at the problem that we're trying to solve. And if you've been anywhere in any way conscious for the last 10 years, you have noticed just an, a, an explosion in the realm of cybercrime, identity theft, fraud, um, uh, cyber warfare, and we could go on and on and on. Now generally when we talk about being the chief information security officer of a business, of an organization, we're really uh, generally going to be primarily concerned with protecting our company's data and our information. And that's what this class is going to focus on as we're information security officers. So what we're concerned with is data loss and theft of information. And you can see that I have some statistics here. Uh, 15 million victims of identity theft and that number just continues and continues to grow. 50 billion dollars in losses for identity theft. Credit card fraud, 16 billion dollars there. 21 record, million records, if you're familiar with the breach at the Office of Personnel Management, and they're certainly not the only government agency that was compromised as well. Um, losses in fines due to non-compliance and of course as a senior executive those losses those fines being found liable um, possibly being sued by the board of directors or stakeholders shareholders these are all big 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 concerns of mine so basically what we've got to do is we've got to figure out how to at least mitigate some of these risks that are associated with our information so, what is our response? Well, we're going to look at bringing security into the executive level of an organization. Um, what that really means is there are a couple of different strategies or a couple of different ways that security gets implemented within an organization, top-down or bottom-up. And when we talk about top-down management, that means that the senior managers are directly involved. They're active participants, they have buy-in on security, and they support and um, uh, provide resources and funding for the security uh, function. Long story short, they get it, right? Senior management's backing security, they understand the losses, they're on board. That's top down, okay? and that's really the way an organization runs best. Now the alternative to that is bottom up. And what that means is senior management looks at IT as a necessary evil. And then ultimately it's the IT department and the security department coming to senior management trying to convince them that they need resources and that they need support. And obviously that's not going to work as well. So if we can get senior management on board, we get better support we can align security with the business needs of the organization. As in, we're just not applying security for the sake of security, but we truly understand what the organization needs and we're going to help implement security in such a manner that the organization can get there. Okay, um, We're going to make sure that um, security policies are implemented, that they're enforced, that they're supported. So really, if you look at it, security is such an essential function it has to be provided at the executive level. All right, now, if we do that, if we incorporate security uh, governance into senior management, so basically we have senior management involved, then ultimately what we're going to get is we're going to get a long list of benefits, and I'm not going to read every one of these, but certainly we're going to get compliance because if because senior management sets the tone for the organization. If senior management is on board, that will trickle down. Uh, we'll be able, hopefully, to avoid being liable of any sort of loss. We're going to illustrate due care and due diligence. Um, ideally, that will provide us with trust with our customers. It will help us avoid fines and, and violations of regulations. There are just many, many different benefits. And down at the bottom, effectively managing information security resources Courses, making sure that we implement security as necessary, again, as driven by the needs of the organization. Um, so six outcomes. Ultimately, what we're marching towards, I've already mentioned this idea of strategic alignment. The security function has to support the business. And sometimes you can actually have too much security. 
When I implement more security than is warranted by the functions of the operation and the value of what we're protecting, that's too much security. I want to provide enough to effectively support the business. Okay, risk management. Really, if you think about it, risk management is just security management. Security management is just risk management, really is the better way to say that. So when we think about protecting our assets and we think about, you know, all the things that we have to go through, we're going to go through those steps that are sort of universal to risk management. Figure out what you're protecting and what it's worth. Look at the threats, look at the vulnerabilities, and try to find a cost-effective cost solution. If security governance is in place, again, coming from senior management down, then we'll be able to have a better risk, in man uh, mis risk management um, implementation. All right, resource op optimization. Um, I have never had senior management give me a blank check and, and have them say, just spend all you need but protect our resources. If you're waiting for that day to happen, it will likely not come. So I have a limited budget, and what I have to be able to do is choose to mitigate those risks that provide or that could, uh, could um, those risks that could materialize and have the greatest impact on my organization. i got to spend my money well, so resource op optimization. That's going to sum up our first chapter, which is basically just an overview of why we need a Chief Information Security Officer. Uh, let's go on and move into no, uh, Module 2.